Let us look at the Huawei portable Wi-Fi router because that's what I had. I got from DG the modern design and the potential for battery fire explosions. Is lithium toxic? Yes, lithium is very toxic. The symptoms of lithium poisoning include tremors, trouble walking, kidney problems and many others. That means lithium is very dangerous. How do we dispose of, of lithium? Most countries including Malaysia just throw the lithium batteries into the dustbin. So the products from phones, computers, cameras, modems end up in our landfills. No one is collecting the batteries. Not even the shops that sell electronic products based on lithium ion batteries are collecting your expired or damaged products for safe disposal or recycling. You know what is happening? We are slowly poisoning our country, the land we live on. The lithium gets into the bacteria, into the creatures, into the earthworms and the birds eat them and it comes back to us eventually in the long run just like the way plastics have infiltrated the oceans we are killing ourselves with lithium poisoning in the long run there are serious design flaws in portable modems and let me address these issues in this video the first problem i had was my lithium ion battery was swollen it has been swelling i think for quite some time uh, the I only I bought this modem about one year, two months ago. It had swollen so much that it must have been swelling more than three, four months ago. So it is really rotten, rubbish. It's some cheap stuff they are bringing into Malaysia and dumping into this country. Can you imagine? This is Huawei. The people who designed 5G networks are coming and giving you this kind of rubbish that means they are not really that good isn't it I won't be surprised your 5G doesn't work properly either when I noticed that my battery was swollen I decided to go back to the DG service center to ask them if I could replace the battery and they told me that uh, this model is out of date and it's been discontinued and they don't supply any batteries so I checked around the shops nearby my area and all of them did not have this battery. They said it is no more in stock. Then I went to a DG reseller and they started questioning me how I'm charging the battery. And I said I'm using a, a battery charger uh, for the USB. All USB ports have only one voltage, five volt. So he started accusing me of overcharging the battery and all the rubbish that comes out of it and I told him I don't want to deal with him anymore. Uh, actually, the, they don't understand what is going on. They think they are smart, but actually it's a 5 volt supply. A 5 volt supply is always constrained by 1 amp, 1.5 amps, 2 amps, 3 amps. You cannot go more than that. And there is a circuit protection, you see? You see, have a look. This is a USB port. That's what is being used to charge. So you can't, you can't say you have a wrong charger, right? So uh, there's a lot of rubbish going on. The salespeople will tell you every Tom, Dick and Harry stories about how they are right and you are wrong. So don't believe them. Most of them are uneducated people. Some of them don't even have a diploma in electronics, right? So I decided, uh, let me check and see what is wrong with this particular design. And that's how 
I started looking at the battery design, the voltage, and I found that the battery voltage from the battery itself is 3.8 volts, which is the voltage of my Nikon battery chargers. And I found that I could use the Nikon battery charger to charge the battery, but it wouldn't switch on. It always came back with a battery error. That means, you see, I found out which side is positive, which side is negative, and the two uh, pins in between have some form of communication. It's not a shot, you know, it's not a shot. It doesn't, if you shot it with a screw, a screwdriver, it won't, uh, uh, it won't indicate that there's a battery. There is some co form of communication going on between the modem circuit and the battery circuit. So there must be an IC a chip inside the battery to identify it is the correct battery. So that's another precaution that the modem uh, designers have included. So I managed to get it to work by connecting a battery there and my battery charger, Nikon battery charger was ch saying it's charging and the modem was working no problem. And the, the thing about it is I wasn't charging the battery, right? I was delivering power to the modem and it was running. As long as the battery was there to tell the modem that there's a battery there. And then I found out that if you take out if you take out the battery, if you plug in the USB charger without the battery there, it won't work. There are several reasons that can cause a lithium-ion battery explosion. Firstly, there are manufacturing defects that can cause leakage and corrosion. Secondly, in order to cut costs to make the cheapest batteries, the casing and the internal sheets are made ultra thin. This will allow the battery to swell and eventually explode. And lastly, when the batteries are physically damaged, like I am doing right now, the batteries will start to smoke and heat up until there is an explosive, uncontrollable fire. Now, let me show you the circuit I have designed to solve all these problems. It's a conceptual circuit. You want to build a real circuit out of it, there will be a lot of changes, modifications or upgrades to the design. But the concept is there. You just take out the uh, certain blocks and add uh, more electronics to it. And you will have a wonderful working circuit that does everything for you and protects your battery and your equipment. As you can see, on the extreme left are two diodes to drop the 5 volt supply to 3.8 volts. The 3.8 volts then drives the modem circuit or it can be a camera circuit or whatever. On the right hand side of the circuit where the 5 volt supply comes in from the USB supply, you have option of using trickle charge which is a variable resistor or you can use uh, electronic circuit charger, battery charger circuit to charge the battery. Uh, these are 50 cents to 1 US dollar each from China and you can buy them by the thousands or you can just buy the chip and incorporate it into your modem design. So when the 5 volt supply is on, in the center of the circuit you see a transistor that will detect the 5 volt supply coming on and switch on the relay. When the relay is on, it's an open circuit. So it blocks the battery voltage from being supplied to the modem circuit. When there is no 5 volt supply, this uh, transistor circuit switches off and the relay will close circuit automatically because if there is no power delivered to the relay, the relay will be a short circuit. And that means uh, the battery voltage will be driving the modem circuit. So the advantage of this is when you plug in the USB supply, the 5 volt USB supply drives the modem. But the battery, if it's underpowered, will be charged. And the electronic circuit will stop the charging when the battery is full. 
but the battery won't be used until you disconnect the USB supply. Once you disconnect the USB supply, the battery takes over and supplies voltage to the modem circuit. That's very brilliant. It's a concept circuit, but it's very brilliant. It's simple and it shows you how you can make the whole system safer. There's no such thing as did you overcharge the battery? There is no such thing as were you using, were you charging the battery while you were using the modem? Or did you overcharge the battery? Did you leave the battery or charged on overnight? All these questions don't come up because the circuit is there uh, decides for you what is the correct approach, what is the correct supply to use. It's simple. Why can't they design this in cameras, modems, computers? Even my computer, my computer battery didn't even last 20 minutes. I had to keep plugging in the charger to keep charging. And some people say, you want to use your computer from the main supply, you have to remove the battery. And that's nonsense. It's how difficult it is to remove the battery every day, every... So, I hope uh, everyone will use this circuit, or uh, improved version of the circuit. This is just a concept idea, simplified version, and uh, it will save, it will, even the handphones, uh, it will save people from exploding handphones. After I showed you the potential improvement in designs for portable modems and how to save the battery or prevent it from being damaged. Who do you think are the best electronic designers in the world? Are they the Chinese? If you don't think they are the best, then how about the Americans, the Japanese, the Europeans? Who do you think it is?